Hi, this is Dr. David Lupkeman. In this video, I will show you how to use a generative AI tool to create a 4-bus power flow program using Python. This is a follow-up to an earlier video on developing a 3-bus power flow as referenced in the video description. We start by reviewing the power flow developed in this previous video. Then we look at how to incorporate a PV generation bus into the PowerFlow logic. The example uses ChatGPT to assist in writing the added PV bus code. As part of this exercise, we also upgrade the data input function to import model information from a CSV file. Before we start on the 4Bus example, I will quickly review what was developed in the previous video on a 3-bus scenario as shown here. We have a single source system consisting of constant power bus loads, all interconnected via transmission lines. Although we focused on this 3-bus example, the power flow code could handle larger systems as long as we just had the single source. In this video, we expand the power flow functionality to handling multiple generation sources. The flowchart for the NBUS system is shown here. First, the data structure is set up and a line network Y bus is built. Then we perform a loop over all the buses to update the voltages through the use of the Y bus entries. Note that this loop does not include the voltage at swing bus S since that voltage is fixed. If any updated voltage differs from the last iteration by more than an error tolerance factor, then we set a convergence flag to false and repeat the update loop. Once convergence is achieved, then we output the power flow results. Here we see the three bus power flow code, which will serve as our starting point in this video. The various functions are all called from a main program function. The input data function creates the data structure, which we need to update in this video. This is followed by the YBUS building function call, which will not need to be modified. The iterative voltage update is implemented in the Gauss-Seidel function. Once we have the converged voltage, there are additional functions called for computing and printing, line flows, losses, and generator power injection. The next step in developing this power flow program is to add the capability of modeling generation sources other than the swing bus. A generation source is assumed to be dispatched at a fixed drill power injection. The generation source also maintains a constant bus voltage by adjusting its reactive power injection. This generation bus will be referred to in the data set as a PV bus. Note that load buses are PQ buses and the swing bus is denoted by SW. In this presentation, we will use the 4-bus system shown here for our coding examples. However, in the final code, we will be able to handle larger bus systems. Let's take a closer look at the PV bus generator model as connected to bus I. We will also model a PV bus local constant power load. The real power injection, PGen, is a known quantity that is specified in the input bus data set. The voltage magnitude Vgen at bus I also needs to be specified. Since voltage magnitude is known, then we only need to compute the voltage angle theta at a PV bus. The reactive power injection Qgen is computed once the voltage magnitude and angle are known. The net injected bus current, I sub I, that we find by multiplying the ith row of Y bus by the voltage matrix is equal to the difference between injected generation current and load current as shown here. The injected generator complex power is VI times the conjugate of the injected generator current, which is equal to V times the conjugate of current plus the load power. We can use this relationship to find the reactive power QGen by taking the imaginary part of the complex generator power. Note these equations are for single phase power so as to be consistent with the per phase model utilized in the power flow program. In the three bus power flow example, 
when we just had to find voltages at constant power PQ buses, we updated the voltage using the formula shown here. The bus net current injection is estimated by taking minus S conjugate divided by V conjugate, where S is a load power and V is the last estimate of the bus voltage. At a PV bus, we use a similar update formula. At a generator PV bus, the current injection now needs to take into account the generator current injection. The generator real power is taken from the known power dispatch, while the generator reactive power is computed using the equation on the previous slide. The voltage update then needs to be corrected so as to have an updated magnitude, which is equal to the generation voltage set point. So we need to add the voltage correction step shown, where we reset the voltage magnitude, but leave the angle unchanged. An updated gauss seidel iteration loop logic for a system with loads, generators, and a single swing bus is shown here. We simply need to set up an update loop to iterate over each bus, which is not the source bus. We then apply the appropriate formulas on the previous slide depending on whether we have a PV bus or a PQ bus. As each bus voltage is updated, we check for convergence, and if convergence for any bus fails, we set the convergence flag to false. We will test our program code using this four bus test case. This is from chapter nine of the textbook, Power System Analysis by Granger and Stevenson. Bus type SW denotes a swing bus, which is an ideal voltage source. PQ denotes a load bus, and PV denotes a generation bus. The bus voltage KV field provides a swing bus voltage, as well as the generator PV bus voltage magnitude set point. Here is a solution for this four bus system test case. These results were obtained using a pre-existing power flow program. Before we modify our original three bus example code to model the PV bus, Let's first revisit the input data function. In the original program, we simply set up fixed bus and line data structures consisting of Python lists. Each list entry stored data in Python dictionary format. The problem with this approach, though, is we have to modify the PowerFlow Python source code in order to create a new case. Let's look at a more flexible way of handling the system data where we read the bus and line data from a common text file. If one is not familiar with how to read data from a file system using Python, it is possible to ask the generative AI tool for options. This shows a query I have constructed for reading data in CSV format. CSV stands for comma separated variable, which is a compatible file format editable in most spreadsheet programs. In this example, I use ChatGPT as my generative AI tool, then proceed by inserting the query into the browser interface as shown. ChatGPT suggests four possible options for inputting file data, with example codes for each option. I will utilize the Python built-in CSV option for the sake of simplicity. Next, I set up an AI tool request for modifying the original input data function. I want the function to read the bus and line data from a CSV file using the Python built-in library. Note I also request the CSV text file. ChatGPT then gives me the new input data function code that I can now integrate into my PowerFlow program. The AI response also includes the CSV data file contents. If you open this CSV file in a spreadsheet, you see that the data is organized into bus data and line data rows as shown. I find it easier to use a tool such as a spreadsheet to view and modify data rather than editing the text file with all the commas. Before integrating the new input data function into our existing PowerFlow program, we first need to test it to make sure it works. I will do this in a Jupyter lab cell by calling the function from a main program and then printing out the bus and line data. When this code is executed, we find that the CSV data read from the file into the variable reader is not being completely processed. 
the bus data is being handled properly, but there is nothing being mapped into the line data structure. Taking a closer look at the program code, we see that there is a mistake in the logic. A for loop is used to map each row stored in the variable reader to either a bus or line data structure. At the beginning of this loop, there is a test for line data where the variable is line data is set to true when we get to the line data rows. But then this continue statement that follows jumps us out of the for loop before appending any rows to the line data structure. This is typical of what you can get when using generative AI to write program code. Overall, the program code looks complete, but there could be simple errors which you still need to correct. The debugged code, after correcting the logic, is shown in the next cell. You can see that I removed the if block that sets isLineData and executes the continue statement. Instead, I modified the existing logic to jump to the appropriate bus or line row handling code using a test on the section name. Note I also print an error message if we have a non-bus or line data entry. Now, when we rerun the input data function, we get the correct results. Next, we need to update the Gauss-Seidel function call to model PV generation buses. Here I have formulated a chat GPT request that includes the PV generation bus modeling requirements discussed so far in this presentation. My requirements state that the data is contained in bus entries of type PV as well as the bus data field names for voltage and power set points. The requirements also indicate that a PV bus can have a load component. Then at the end of the request, I provide the previous Gauss-Seidel function code to be modified. It is important to point out that I am assuming the generative AI tool has been trained with power flows that include PV bus modeling. The results of this chat GPT request have been pasted into a Jupyter lab cell, as you can see here. Scrolling through the code, we notice that a test in the bulge iterative update loop has been added to handle PV generation buses. Through examining this code, we see it is very similar to the PV bus calculation logic described earlier in this presentation. So it appears that ChatGPT has successfully modified our original code with an addition that is consistent with our expectations. Now we can integrate both the new input data and Gauss-Seidel functions into our original three bus example code. We test this in a new Jupyter lab cell as shown here. The program executes without a syntax error. However, even though printed results appear reasonable, when compared to our benchmark test case results, we notice several small discrepancies. So it will now be necessary to more carefully review our Gauss-Seidel function logic. Upon further inspection, we see that the definition for QNet has a small error. QNet should be given by V times conjugate of I. After making this change, we rerun the code and now get the correct results. Notice that the power injection for the generator is not provided in the output results. So this additional functionality must now be added. Finally, we need to modify the generator injection calculation and print results functions. This shows the request I have put together for modifying the original code so as to include PV power injections. The results from the chat GPT query are then copied and pasted into our latest code version. Looking at the code, we see where the logic has been added for calculating and printing power injection for both PV and swing buses. When this code is executed, we get the correct results as compared to our benchmark case. So finally, we have a power flow program that can handle all three bus types. In this presentation, I have shown how a generative AI tool can be leveraged to add new functionality to an existing power flow program written in Python. Source code for the examples could be found at the GitHub site 
provided in the video description. Hopefully my videos in Generative AI have given you ideas on how to write your own PowerFlow analysis code. Feel free to start with my examples and adding your own extensions.